I'd like to call to order the January 15, 2013 meeting of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. The first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was actually in November, November 20th, 2012. Does anyone have any comments on the November minutes? Would anyone like to make a motion? Liza? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? One abstention and six in favor. OK. Um, <clears throat> the next item is correspondence, of which there is none tonight. And if there, uh, we, will ha we have two other items of business on the agenda, the election of officers and lot 20 at Cross Hill subdivision. If there's any member of the public who would like to speak on any other topic, we'll have a brief public comment period. Anyone wish to speak on anything other than these two matters? OK, thank you. So the next item of business is the election of officers. Tonight we need to elect a new chair and vice chair. The term of the chair is limited to two years, and this is the end of my two-year term. Would anyone like to make a nomination for the position of chair? Liza? I'd like to nominate Victoria Valent for chair. Anyone have a second? Second. Carol Ann? Um, any members of the public wish to comment on this? Seeing no one here tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. And do we have a nomination for the position of vice chair? Victoria? I'd like to nominate Liza Quinn. Okay, as do we have a second? Second. Joe, thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Again, unanimous. Thank you. And with that, I will switch seats and turn the gavel over to Victoria. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Elaine. I'd like to thank you for the time and energy you have contributed as chair. Um, you've been a great role model for me, and I greatly appreciate how I've learned from you. And I think everyone else will also agree that, along with your knowledge and thoroughness and respect for the opinions of others, you're very organized and can process information very quickly in a remarkably thoughtful and useful way. Um, I appreciate knowing that you're remaining on the board and that you'll continue, we will continue to benefit from your dedicated service. Thanks, you. Elaine. Thank you. It's been an honor to serve. Okay. Before we begin the uh, next item on the agenda, um, I did want to um, point out a few adjustments to our format that I'll be introducing this evening, all with an eye towards enhancing communication. Um, first, as has been our practice, each new item will continue to be introduced by the chair. And then the town planner will provide a summary of the project within the context of town regulations which will then immediately be followed by the presentation by the applicant. And if there's any questions or comments about the planner's summary, they should um, wait till after the applicant has had a chance to make their presentation. Uh, the second adjustment will be an introduction of a planner's report. This is similar to the manager's report that is given at the, um, by the town manager to the town council during their regular meetings. Um, the planner's report will be an opportunity to disseminate information that's of interest to the planning board and to the public during our regular broadcasted meetings. And third, after the approval of the minutes, the chair will provide the order of agenda of items. And this is just a quick and easy way to state the order of business to citizens, whether they're joining us here at Town Hall or watching from home. And I hope these adjustments will be effective at promoting and improving communications. So um, at this point then, um, next on our agenda is Lot 20, Cross Hill Subdivision Amendment 
Joe and Michelle Kane are requesting an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to change the building envelope for the lot located at 10 Cross Hill Road, map U58.20, under section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivision plans, and there will be a public hearing held on this item. Uh, Maureen, would you like to give a summary? Sure. First report. Uh, so Dominicus Crossing was a 97 lot subdivision approved in 1997. None of you were here then. Um, in 1999, the subdivision was amended to give it the new name Cross Hill, and there were some new names for the roads. Uh, the subdivision is located in the RB zoning district, and most of you realize that that's our growth area. So there's a, min maximum, a minimum 40% open space set aside that's required for development in that area. Uh, lot 20 is located on Cross Hill Road and Apple Tree Lane, so it's a corner lot. It's across from the green, which was an open space uh, set aside and owned by the town as part of the original subdivision. Uh, the building envelope for lot 20 was skewed to the east to preserve a view of the Spurwink Marsh from the green. Uh, and the Canes are tonight requesting a change to that building envelope and changes to the building envelope are required to get a review from the planning board as an amendment to a previously approved subdivision under section 16-2-5. Uh, and if you do grant the approval, it will require a plan that needs to be recorded with your signatures that amends the subdivision plat. Thank you. If the uh, applicants would like to make a presentation, step to the podium and you do need to introduce yourself for the record by giving your name and address. This is, is this just gives the visibility where the current plan provides the proposed building envelope to be um, logged um, <clears throat> with the county. Um, this just gives a comparison of what the uh, previous building envelope was that was recorded. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. discussions um, at that meeting um, we took into consideration the feedback of uh, you know certain landscaping uh, considerations and such and the, the, uh, the first I'll describe actually and what you're looking at right now the area in red uh, is the existing building envelope as defined in the development um, and simply what we are proposing is the um, is the area in blue so you'll see that um, near the corner of Apple Tree and Cross Hill, you'll see that we're moving the building envelope further away from Cross Hill Road um, to give a little bit more view, the visibility um, at the corner of that intersection. And you'll also see down at the very bottom um, in the area that's uh, near Lot 21 and Lot 1-1, we're giving up some of that building envelope to try to normalize as best we can um, the similar square footage. But this is a plan that we have reviewed with our builder that would suit the anticipated designs that we're, we hope to start working on um, once we are able to complete this exercise and also then follow up with the closing of this land transaction. Um, I do have, as you guys can see, and for the public to view, um, there is this, this building envelope is defined. It is certainly within all the setbacks that are standard to the town um, and we've actually come in within those um, as a way of trying to again maintain um, some uh, limits to what we're trying to uh, expand. Are there any other questions that I can answer? I have a question. Just to be clear, make sure I'm understanding clearly, the Proposed new building envelope has the same square footage as, is it larger, smaller? 
It's, Why? it's a little bit larger. The original plan we reviewed at the, um, at we wrote up uh, for the last workshop was a net exact similar square footage, but we realized that um, it was straight to the setbacks, which is not what we desired and actually came up in conversation that we probably did not want to approach the setback on an apple tree because of the potential view impact it could have to the intersection. So we took that into consideration, um, but we also took into consideration in, in the, where we wanted to, um, the best proposed layout of the house, um, it wasn't going to work out exactly for a net zero change in square footage. Um, Carol Ann, if I may, mm -hmm. the existing is 7,540 square feet. Okay. The proposed is 9,762 square feet. Thank you. Yes. Two questions here. What is the setback from Apple Tree Lane, or does it vary as the lot goes back Apple Tree Lane? It, it does, yeah, it varies. It's okay. Approximately 30 to 35. Okay. So it's, 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 it, it looks on the map like it's not an even width, and that's right. correct. Okay. The other question I have, I see that there's an easement along the um, boundary with lot 21, a sewer easement. It looks like your new building envelope sort of hooks back into the easement. There's a little line that hooks back in there. Is that intentional or is that just a stray line there? We, we, we do, actually the easement, we do not incur on the easement. The pro, that boundary runs along that easement. It does, it, it, it is not the hook crossing that. The save the tree. That oh, that, in the top left corner? No, actually it, it's bottom the right. bottom, bottom, bottom it's the bottom left hand as you're On the very corner? Yeah, there's just a little hook that goes into the easement. I was just curious what that is. Or is that just a... It looks like a straight line. It, 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 the only thing I say is that the, the plan does not encroach on that easement. Okay. It so runs I, a line. It runs parallel. Oh, I don't know what that hook is. It's not anything to do with the... It's just something that the survey guy did. Okay, I guess the question is whether there would be some way to remove that to make it clear that the the boundary of the building envelope is the same as the boundary of the easement. The, well, the original building, we didn't deviate from the original building envelope in that yeah. regard, so. But yeah, we can certainly modify that if that's, well. Could have been an, an error on the original plan there. We can certainly have fun when we take that off. Okay, that would be great. I have a question for Maureen. Maureen? Right here. <laughs> Did you um, get any feedback from Bob O'Malley on driveway? Yes, and it's Bob O'Malley. Oh, thanks. Bob and Malley. he's the public works director, and a question was forwarded to me regarding the placement of a driveway for this lot. And I spoke to the public works director, and there are uh, road ordinance standards that allow the public works director to issue a driveway permit. And he reviewed those standards, and there has been amendments to those standards that make it that eliminate a minimum standard for how close you can be to an intersection, and instead, each lot he has to make that determination to to minimize how close you can be to an intersection instead of a flat number. And in this case, uh, his position was, and I, apparently the applicants have approached him, that at a minimum he would be asking for the driveway to be a minimum of 20 feet away from the intersection of Cross Hill Road, uh, thinking that a parking space is typically a 9 by 18 or a 20 foot long space. So. Um, it would provide enough stacking space for one car before you had the opening of the driveway. And he felt that that would be safe. Great, thanks. Okay. I have a question for Maureen. Um, on lot 21, there is not and has never been any kind of easement that would continue the view corridor set up by the uh, building envelope on lot 20, right? That's true. I guess I have one more question. Is it appropriate for us to designate at, in our approval that the driveway will be accessed from Apple Tree Lane and not from Cross Hill Road? 
Um, in, there are some lots in this subdivision where the specific location of the driveways were designated by the planning board. In most cases, that was done either to make sure the driveway was on an exist was going to be on a subdivision road as opposed to an existing road, or to make sure the driveway was placed somewhere that was not going to alter a wetland when there was also frontage that included a wetland. So there is a past practice of the board designating locations of driveways when you felt there was a good reason to do it. Um, so if you wanted to do it, you could. Thank you. Any more questions? I believe at this time I have to open the uh, meeting to the public. Is that correct? The public hearing. So let me go ahead and open that meeting. Uh, any comments from the public? Seeing none, I'm now going to close the public hearing. And we can resume. Anyone have any further comments, questions? No? OK. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I, do have, I do have a comment, and it, it relates to Elaine's question on the driveway. And I know, I know from comments from the applicants, applicant in the past, they're looking at putting their driveway on Apple Tree because it's a, a less traveled road. But in actual, I think the original intent of this lot was to have the driveway off Cross Hill. Um, I would hate to encumber somebody unnecessarily um, because they, their final house design may come up and prove to be that the most efficient access would be from Cross Hill Road and not from Apple Tree. May or may not, I, and I know that's not their intent, but I'd hate to, to make it so they, they had no other option should that arise. So that's just my position on that particular comment. Just to, to add to what Planning Board Member Jordan said, that um, there was a time when the board was looking at placing every driveway for every subdivision lot, and exactly some of the comments that she made were what occurred. You know, you would pick a location for the driveway, and then someone would decide they wanted their garage on the other side of the lot, and you would either have the choice of making someone come back to the Planning Board to amend that one decision, or you would be ignoring that, that approval because it didn't seem to have a, a huge weight on the subdivision plan. So the whole idea of putting in restrictions when there's a meaningful basis behind it, I think has value. And I'm not saying that putting a restriction in on this is meaningful or not, but I think that is a good thing to think about. Uh, I see no compelling reason here to require the specific location of the driveway. There's a a huge amount of uh, frontage on ways. And when you're jacking a house around, sometimes the tweaking of the driveway location, even within a fairly constrained area, is can be important. And I don't think it would make any sense to have them have to come back to move the access port onto the, onto the street by 10 or 15 feet. This seems to be a pretty straightforward uh, situation. So I, I guess I would not favor requiring the location of the driveway. I think the only issue is one of us. Sorry. I think the only one is a question of safety, and that's up to uh, the builders and any official that can designate the, you know, the town of uh, Cape Elizabeth uh, traffic, uh, what do you call them, traffic director. <laughs> Mr. Who? Bob Malley. Bob Malley. Yes. <laughs> Not the comedian. I now know. <laughs> Malley. I'm sorry. My British accent. Yeah, I agree with Pete. I think that a driveway works just as well on Cross Hill or Apple Tree Lane. And so I, don't, I wouldn't want to restrict where it goes. Um, three, is there a fourth that not looking to make any restrictions on the driveway? Or? Yeah. OK. So. I agree. All right. That's because of the driveway. Um, any more discussion about either the building envelope size or the location of the building envelope? No. no questions on that? Any other comments, questions? OK. Um, not seeing any. Would anyone like to make a motion at this time? I'll make one. Yeah. Okay, motion for the board to consider. Finding effect. 
Michelle and Tom Kane are requesting an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to change the building envelope for Lot 20, located at 10 Cross Hill Road, which requires review under Section 16-2-5, Amendments of Previously Approved Subdivisions. The applicant substantially complies with the standards of the subdivision ordinance, Section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Michelle and Tom Kane for an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to change the building envelope for Lot 20, located at 10 Cross Hill Road, be approved. Before we continue, would anyone like to make an amendment to the... I will. Carol Ann. Uh, on... Uh... Finding of fact number one, it should be Michelle and Joseph Kane. And on the final uh, sentence here, it should be Michelle and Joseph Kane. So. Second on that change? Does somebody second the change? I think if, if Joe just accepts it, then. Oh, OK. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, then do I? No, I'll second the, uh, second the motion. Okay, um, then all those uh, approved? Bef before we vote, I, I did want to add yes. one point. Um, I think it, it's important that we just state on the record the location of this original building envelope was thought by the planning board as intended to preserve a view corridor. Um, just in case this comes up again, we are not just sort of without thought closing a view corridor. What seems to have happened on this property is that in the original subdivision layout, there was no restriction on vegetation growth. In fact, the only vegetation that can be removed is dead or diseased vegetation. So in fact, what was discussed originally as a view corridor, in effect, is no view corridor. And we did go out to the site, and we did determine that even in winter, when there were no leaves on any tree at all, that the original intended view from the open space down to the marsh is mostly obscured. And to the extent there is a view, the placement of a house within this new building envelope really would not obscure such view as there is that there are other places in the open space where you can see a little bit of the view corridor. So I just want to make it clear to the public that we're not disregarding what in fact is a view corridor and that we did take a very careful look at that uh, to make sure that we were not closing something that had previously been preserved. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, Maureen, do we need to make any condition around um, this, sur this survey? Around you do probably want to uh, do something about that stray line that is in the, um, I think we're going to call it the eastern corner, the southeastern corner of the lot. Okay, Anyone well, it looks to be somebody pencil slip. <laughs> can I, I can make, propose yes. an amendment Thank you. to clarify that the um, boundary of the building envelope runs along the northerly, I think it would be, boundary of the um, sewer easement shown on the property, that it's contiguous with that boundary line and does not that the building envelope does not in any way go into the sewer easement area just to find there's a right angle in there but away with it see. Uh, well it's a right angle sort of here no, no, I think, I think you that a right angle. yeah with that yeah it, it that sounded good we'll, we'll wordsmith so that's a condition of approval condition of approval that needs to be seconded that needs to be seconded thank you yes. okay any other comments at this time? Anything I've overlooked? Then, uh, now that we have our motions, um, and we had a second by Eliza. Okay. Um, is there a, no discussion? So, um, all in favor of the motion? And all opposed? And that would be unanimous in favor of the motion. 
So you're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Enjoy moving again. <laughs> yeah, <but> yeah. <laughs> Um, motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Motion we adjourn. Second. Second by Elaine. Second by Elaine. We are adjourned. Wow. Well done. This is a record.